Hello everyone, this is Sulky, and in today's video we are going to be talking about whether or not you should pull for the Raiden Shogun on her rerun banner. And honestly, the short answer? Absolutely, 100% yes you should, but if you need more convincing, let's do a deep dive into why Raiden can add so much value to your team, whether you're free to play or you're a whale. So even though Raiden had the best banner sales of any Genshin character like ever, she was not well received when she first came out. And honestly, that's the case for most Inazuma characters upon release so far, let's be real. But with time, people began to understand her full potential and how she works in the meta specifically. And by the way, I know we're talking about meta, and my primary reason for making this video is particularly so people can figure out if Raiden works with what they have and if she's worth the primos. But if you like her as a character, that is totally valid. Just pull for her. You do not need me to tell you that. But for the players that care about meta and about making her work with what you have, the best thing about her is that she's versatile and she's extremely free to play friendly as well as beginner friendly. Some of her team comps are pretty easy to manage where you can get the hang of the rotations rather quickly. But before we talk about the teams, like let's just talk about what kind of character she is. So the first thing that comes to mind is that she is the Archon of Batteries. Raiden will literally charge up the rest of your team, restoring about like 20 to 30 energy per rotation, freeing up the rest of your team to focus less on building energy recharge and focus more on their damage. Now she's gonna scale off of ER2, so the more ER on her, the better. So aiming for like the mid 200s as like the sweet spot there. In addition to that, she's also a buffer. Her elemental skill is going to buff the burst damage of the rest of your party by like a little over 20%, making a rotation always begin with Raiden using her skill before allowing the other characters in your party to do their thing. Cause her burst is gonna come last in any rotation, each character that bursts before her is also going to stack, allowing her to do more damage once she actually takes the field. Third, she can even act as your main DPS in some teams. Raiden puts out a lot of damage with her initial strike on her burst. And even at C0, a decently built Raiden can get her first slash to hit anywhere from 100k and up, depending on the buffs put in place at the time. Her being out on the field for about eight seconds during her burst, which is gonna be essential for her to do so the rest of your team's energy could go up, it's important that she makes those eight seconds count. So luckily her damage is not gonna be an issue. I also feel like I should say here that when Raiden comes out for her burst, she has a high resistance to enemy attacks, so each strike is going to go uninterrupted. Now I said C0 before because I think it's important for people to understand that she's incredible without any cons. But I would be remiss to not mention probably the most valuable con out there, which is Raiden C2, ignoring 60% of the enemy's defense on her burst which is gonna make the damage output tremendous. Honestly, C2 Raiden just brings her so over the top that she's kinda OP at that point. Her initial slash on that Q can essentially wipe out a ton of enemies, which honestly sometimes could not always be a good thing if you want her to refill the energy for the rest of your team. But with all of that said, if you are gonna go for cons on Raiden, C2, literally has the best value and it's amazing that it's C2. So if we think of another character like Miku who has that 60% ignore on her skills, that is at C6. So having this at C2 is incredible. Now that we've talked about damage, let's talk about teams where Raiden actually acts as the main DPS. And I first want to mention Sarah, particularly C6 Sarah. And people typically tend to put them together as Sarah support for A. It's pretty incredible. But if Sarah isn't at C6, I think there's some better options for you in terms of buffing for A specifically. So if you're going to go with Electro, Fischl can work, as well as Lisa with TDDS. That was going to give her that attack buff that she wants, and both are free to play friendly, which is a plus. Some less friendly options would be adding in a Hydro character, such as Kokomi or Mona. They could both also hold TTDS for Raiden. 
in meta, those four options aren't too highly desired for your other team, which can definitely be helpful here. But if we're going to be honest here, the best supports for Raiden are going to be Bennett and Kazaha. Bennett, of course, is going to give her that attack buff, and Kazaha can infuse Bennett's pyro and deal overload damage while also giving her an electro damage bonus. So if you don't have Kazaha, Sucrose or Jean can also infuse the pyro for that overload damage. But obviously, with that said, those are two highly desirable characters as well. This is, of course, only for the hyper carry. And besides hyper carry, I also want to talk about the more popular team, in my opinion, that Raiden usually falls into with the Abyss, and that is Raiden National. So even though Raiden hyper carry teams can definitely utilize some of the less popular meta characters and still thrive, Raiden National seems to be more popular, even though it uses the most popular four stars out there. And I think that's for a couple of reasons. Um, in fact, this is the team that I actually run in the Abyss and I love it so much because it's honestly, it's seamless. It's fun to play and very easy to master. So this team is Bennett, Shangling, and Xingqiu on the team. Raiden is gonna allow them to burst every rotation if built properly and allow them to focus more on their own damage instead of energy issues. Plus, like I said before, Raiden's also still gonna get that Benny burst to help her out with her own burst, which will ultimately fresh the team for the next rotation. So obviously, this is not only very competitive and a viable option for the Abyss, but it uses all four stars with Raiden, so everyone has the characters. It's super free to play friendly, and she's gonna add a lot of value here for the team. With that out of the way, let's move on to weapons here. Uh, obviously, Engulfing Lightning was made for her. So <laughs> that kind of begs the question, should you pull for it on the weapon banner? So let's be realistic. She's running with Kokomi, which means that the donut is on the weapon banner with engulfing lightning. So that said, the weapon banner really doesn't have that much value this time around. And it's honestly the most unforgiving and excruciating banner out there if you're free to play. So unless you're like me and you don't care and you want engulfing lightning because you love Raiden, I wouldn't necessarily advise it, especially because there's some incredible free to play options for her. I want to specifically talk about the catch because I feel like that weapon was also made for her and it's only like a little bit less valuable than engulfing lightning is, believe it or not, particularly at R5. So you can R5 it through fishing. It's going to increase the burst damage by 32% and burst crit rate by 12%. And here is the side by side comparison with engulfing and the catch. So as we conclude, I think it's important to really consider where she fits in on your teams and which characters you already have. For five stars specifically, Miko who just came out, Kazaha, Jean, Kokomi, Mona, and even Yula, who's actually another popular team comp with Raiden, they all want her on their teams. And she, like I said, if you have the four stars built, she's gonna benefit from Shangling, Xingqiu, Benny, Sarah at C6, Lisa, etc. But overall, Raiden has some of the best meta teams in the game, Hyper Carry and National, and she just adds so much value to the rest of your team. Being the amazing battery she is, she'll always make sure that your other teammates are ready to burst each rotation. So, what do you think? Are you going to pull for Raiden Shogun when she has her rerun? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you are pulling for her, good luck to you. And I will see you in the next video.